So first off, I just want to quickly thank everyone that watched my last video. I have never had a video take off like that. And of course, the one that does has to be the one about the X100V. So um, appreciate all the comments and the feedback and the questions. And for those of you who are just now discovering my channel, I just want to be honest with you. I don't, I don't get a post as frequently as I'd like. But what I can tell you is that the videos that I do make, uh, they mean a lot to me. So yeah, this video specifically is going to be uh, a follow up to that last Fuji video and how I achieve uh, the look of those photos. So yeah, let's talk about uh, my Fuji X100V recipes. So before you start with any recipes, I would suggest looking into a black promise filter. They're not necessary, but I do think it's important to achieve this specific look. These aren't new things. Uh, most of you probably already know what they are. Most of you probably have them. Um, I personally use the 1 4th Pro Mist, and that's after trying all the different strengths. Um, I usually like to use the 1 8th version for some of my video work, but I found that for that kind of softened, dreamy kind of filmy look the one fourth was the sweet spot for photos um, the moment cinebloom 20 percent will also have a similar or equivalent amount of diffusion as as the black pro mist so honestly i would just pick up whatever is cheaper so on to the recipes these are kind of like the secret sauce to getting that look right but um, the best part is they're not a secret at all and you know, the good people at FujiX Weekly, they provide all of these awesome recipes through their awesome app for free. So all you need to do is make sure you're choosing the right sensor type. Um, and in this case, that's gonna be the X-Trans 4 sensor. And you'll be able to see in the app which recipes are compatible with which sensor. So make sure you double click or make sure you double check that. One of my favorite parts about the X100V is that you can program up to seven different custom settings, which is awesome. So all you need to do once you have them loaded up is click your front simulation button and boom. Uh, at that point, you'll be able to cruise through all seven of your preset simulations. Um, and I think that's important because not only does it make things much faster, but you also uh, are more flexible depending on your lighting situations. Um, what I like to do personally is program my camera to have three or four different uh, recipes for daylight, uh, a couple for low light situations, and then one black and white recipe that I really like. Um, and what I end up actually doing most of the time is uh, I'll just go through each of the recipes and see what looks best depending on my current situation. So here's a list of those film simulations that I currently use uh, along with the actual inputs. The first recipe that I use and the one that I probably shoot like 90% of the time is the Portra 400 V2. Uh, I, find, I find that it is really a good baseline for that film look, especially if you're shooting in bright daylight conditions. Um, that combined with the Promise filter really makes shooting in broad daylight really fun. And that's something that I used to hate doing. Um, so like I'm no longer just like waiting around for sunrise or sunset to get those awesome, beautiful images. Um, and I'd even argue that this recipe actually looks even better when you're shooting in harsh sun. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, the other four that I use are Ektar 100, Kodachrome 64, uh, Kodak Gold and Ultramax 400. I don't use these as often, but I do like th having them just for different scenarios. Um, sometimes Portra 400 is a bit too warm when you're inside. So in that case, I might switch over to Gold, which tends to lean a little bit cooler. Um, and that always helps when you're kind of like fighting warm interior lighting or something. Um, the Ultramax 400 is definitely a much more contrasty recipe without that warmth you get from Portra. I think ultimately though, like Ektar, Kodachrome and Ultramax are pretty similar. The main thing is that they have those different levels of contrast, which they increase in that order. Um, with these four recipes though, it's 
important, all the recipes actually, it's important that you're following the exposure compensation guidelines, which are all in the Food Jokes Weekly app. Um, and in most of my cases, I'm typically shooting one to two stops overexposed. So for night shooting, I really love the Cinestill 800T recipe. It is a really fun uh, recipe and you can get some really cool stuff, especially when you use the built-in flash on the X100V. Uh, you get that kind of like party look with people. And then you can get some like really cool images, like dreamy images when you are shooting against like harsh light sources and stuff like that at night. It's, it's a really awesome, really awesome recipe. And then finally, I use the Ilford HP5 recipe for black and white. I don't really have a good reason for this one. I just, it's just kind of my go-to uh, for when I do shoot film, which is pretty rare. And honestly, that's the only black and white film that I've ever used. So that just kind of made sense for me. Most of my images that I shared uh, in that last video were straight out of camera. And most, most of the pictures that I do in general are. But there are certain instances where I want to further achieve that you know, that pop in an image. Um, so occasionally I will do a tiny amount of post-processing and I just wanted to share that process with you guys as well. So what I'm about to show you guys is definitely not what I would call a conventional photography editing. You know, at the end of the day, we are taking a JPEG and we're just kind of crushing it down with a film simulation and then crushing it even more with processing. So, you know, this is probably pretty dumb, but you know, for me, it's why I bought the camera. It's just something I figured out that works for me through a lot of experimentation. And honestly, the desire to do like as little as possible to get that achieved look. So with that said, if you don't have the Visco app installed on your phone, you'll want to do that first. Um, again, I shoot everything JPEG. I've honestly never even used the raw function on this camera. It's just not what I bought it for. And I'm doing this all through my phone. So I'm sending the JPEGs from the camera straight to the phone. And if you don't know how to do that, there's plenty of videos on YouTube that'll show you how to do that. So once you have your images transferred uh, to your phone, you can open them in the Visco app. And from there, I usually use one of the presets like uh, Kodak Color Plus 200 or the Fuji Superior ones I really dig. And when you first open it up in the preview, it's going to look like shit. And that's just because the preset is set at the maximum, at the default maximum intensity. Um, so what I'll do is I'll bring that slider like way down to like one or 1 1.5. This is a very subtle thing. So, you know, it's not like a, it's not going to change your image completely, but I, I always find that it adds like a nice little pop to the photo. And you can click on the photo to see the before and after. Like I said, it's not going to be a huge difference, um, but it works for me and I'm always really pleased with the results. And that is literally it. I know some of you guys are watching this, scratching your head thinking there's gotta be more to it, but I'm telling you that is it. And again, this is, this is the beauty of the Fuji X100V, you know, like, Everything that I can do to avoid an extra step after taking a photo is just going to make taking photos that much more enjoyable for me. So yeah, thanks for watching. Hopefully uh, you got something valuable out of this video. I'm sorry it took me so long to get this one out, but um, yeah, I, I highly recommend that you just try the different emulations in the Fuji X weekly app. It's so awesome. And uh, you know, these are just my preferences. So, you know, if, if there's ones out there that you guys think I would dig, please just let me know. I would love to hear more about them. And uh, yeah, leave me a comment. Um, let me know how these work out for you. And if there's many other like Fuji X100V videos that you guys want to see in the future, let me know. Thanks for watching. See ya.